Jonathan Landeros with Kativ Technologies, and today I'm going to talk about how I used iLogic and Autodesk Inventor to create a configurable template that I used in the woodworking products that I sometimes work on when I have free time. The challenge I had was that sometimes I want a tenon joint at the end of the board. At other times, I want a board without the joint. I could have had two different templates, but what I really wanted was the ability to toggle the tenon on or off on the fly. So I looked to a rule created with an iLogic inside of Inventor. iLogic would allow me to create a template that contained both configurations, but it would make it easy to toggle between the two that I wanted. First, I'm going to create the functional portion, the parameters and the list that make this all work. So let's lift the hood, grab some wrenches, and get to work. As I open up Inventor, I have my board already created. It contains the tenon joints that I'm going to toggle off with iLogic already put in. It also has this sketch that I'm using to define the overall length of the board, including the tenons. This parameter is exported so it's available to my bill of materials when I need it. This is going to be used for my cut length when I get there. We're going to return to this later. iLogic is going to make use of this when we create the rule. First, I open up my parameter screen and make sure I've named all the parameters that I need. I've named a few of these already, but I'll finish out a couple so we can see the process. And as we look at this, we can see there's parameters that define the width, thickness, and shoulder length of the board. That's the length excluding the tenons. Next, we have the same length parameters for the tenons themselves, the length, the width, and the thickness. And also, we have that overall parameter that I said we're going to come back to later. Remember him. iLogic's going to make use of this. Now, I'll add a text parameter, name it, and when I right-click on that parameter, I'm going to make a multi-value list. I enter the value for regular joint and tenon joint. This will create a list that will allow me to toggle the joint on or off. Now we have the switch installed, but we have to wire it so it works correctly. So now I create an iLogic rule and I add the following rules using a couple different methods available to me. If you know the syntax for your rule, you can always just type away. But if you need a little bit of help, make use of the snippets and the parameters to help build out your rule. I'm going to start out by inserting an if then else statement and telling the rule that if the joint type is equal to tenon, then turn on the feature named tenon. That's what these texts are doing right here. Also, I want to set a parameter length equal to the parameter length OL. This makes sure I get the proper length when it's exported out to my bill of materials. I did say this one was going to come back. In the next part of my statement, I can just copy and paste the same text I just created and then change what I need to to create the new rule. For example, I'm going to change the joint type to be a regular joint. In which case now the statement for the tenon goes from true to false. Instead of being on, it will be off. I'm also going to change that the length should be equal to the shoulder length now, since the tenons are no longer part of this board and aren't included in the length. I'll go ahead and finish out the code and make some comments to make sure that if you ever have to look at this rule again, you'll be able to understand what you were doing. This is important. It may not seem like it, but what happens if you look at this rule a year from now? You don't want to have to try to remember what you did. With this completed, I can use the pull down inside of the parameter screen to toggle the tenon on or off. The model updates, everything happens very cleanly and easily. But there's some of you out there in the verse that may say we could do more with this. And you're right. That's why this is only part one. In part two, I'll show you how to create a dialog box that fires when the template is started. It doesn't do anything new but it presents it in a more user-friendly format. And that can be important, too. You don't want to make this harder to use than it has to. But for now, take a look at this code and use it to get started. That's it for this video, but we'll see you in part two.